Hi there, grade 10. Our lesson for today is about angle relationships and similar triangles. Now, um, let us recall that vertical angles have equal measures. In the figure below, we extended the sides of angle NMP to form another angle RMQ. And the pair of angles NMP and RMQ class are called vertical angles. Vertical angles are also called as opposite angles. So, the two here are congruent. Now, another vertical angles created when the two lines intersect here are angles NMQ and PMQ. So, vertical angles are congruent and vertical angles are also called as opposite angles. Now, parallel lines are lines that lie in the same plane and do not intersect. So, when a line Q, for instance, here intersects these parallel lines M and N, Q is now called as the transversal line. So, take note that this line Q intersects the two parallel lines. So line Q again is called as transversal line. And in this figure also, as what I was saying, this intersects the two parallel lines. And with that, um, there will be some degree measures of angles 1 through 8 that come up with a pair of um, angle relationships. So again, given two parallel lines M and N, transversal line Q. So we have alternate interior angles 4 and 5. So these are alternate interior angles 3 and 6 as well as alternate interior angles so they are called as alternate interior angles because they are placed alternately inside the parallel lines and what's the relationship between pair of alternate interior angles angle measures are equal so angles 4 and 5 are congruent as well as angles 3 and 6 Now we have alternate exterior angles, 1 and 8, this one. Two and seven as well. Take note class that they are also placed alternately um, from the transversal line outside of the parallel lines that's why they are called as exterior angles the bases are the parallel lines and what's the relationship between the two pairs of alternate exterior angles here again angle measures are equal or congruent interior angles on the same side of transversal like angles four and six so interior angles because they are inside the, the parallel lines, the two parallel lines on the same transversal line 4 and 6. So we can say also that this applies to angles 3 and 5. So their angle sum, the sum of the, 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 two, the two pairs is 180. Okay. Corresponding angles, angles 2 and 8, 
So these are corresponding angles. And their angle measures are equal. So they are placed outside of the parallel lines and they belong to the same transversal line also. So their angle measures are equal. So here we're going to find angle measures. Find the measure of each marked angle in the figure given that lines M and N are parallel. So we have two parallel lines and we have this transversal line. And what's the relationship of this angle to this angle? So take note that they are alternately placed outside of the parallel line. So we can say that all alternate interior alternate exterior angle rather so alternate exterior angles are congruent so we have to note for this one that so alternate exterior angles are congruent okay so with that we can equate the two angle measure represented by algebraic expression so 5x minus 40 is equal to quantity 3x plus 2 degrees so we have combining like terms transposing 3x on the other side of the equation We have 2x equals 42. So x will be equal to 21. Now substituting 21 to the x of the expression. 5 times 21 minus 40. And 3 times 21 plus 2. They should be equal. And um, 5 times 21 minus 40 equals 65 degrees as well as 3 times 21 plus 2 equals 65 so the two really are congruent because they are alternate exterior angles now take note that angle sum of a triangle the sum of the measures of the angles of any triangle is 180. So we're referring to the interior angles of a triangle here. So find the measures of two of the angles of a triangle. Find the measures of two of the angles of the triangle are 48 and 61. So find the measure of the third angle. So here, we're given with the two measures of the interior angles of a triangle so what we're going to do is to solve for the third angle there so we know that the sum of the measures of the angles of any triangle is 180 so we will sum up 48 61 and x to 180 so combining like terms, so we got 180 less 48 less 61. So x, which is the third angle, equals 71 degrees. So this is 71 degrees class. So we have classification of triangles. And this is necessary in our next topic. So we have equiangular. So ang all angles are congruent. Okay. So acute 
all acute, all angles are acute. Right triangle, there is one right angle in right triangle, as well as there is one obtuse angle in an obtuse triangle. So when we say equilateral triangle class, all sides are congruent. Isosceles triangle, two sides are congruent. With escaline, no side is congruent. Okay. Now, how do we describe similar triangles? So there are two conditions that would satisfy similar triangles. One is corresponding angles must have the same measure. And corresponding sides must be proportional. So when we say proportional, their ratios must be equal. So here, we're going to find angle measures in similar triangles. Okay, so in the figure, triangles A, B, C, and N, M, P are similar. So find the measures of angles B and C. Now, take note that um, in the figure here or in the illustration here, angle N corresponds to angle A. That's why angle A and N are congruent. It follows also that angle P corresponds to angle C as well as angle M corresponds to angle B. Okay. Now, solving for angles B and C since... Angle B corresponds to angle M. So measure of angle B equals measure of angle M. So we can say that measure of angle B equals 31 degrees. Okay, since angle C corresponds to angle P, so measure of angle B class is equal to measure of angle P. So, measure of angle C equals the measure of angle P, which is 104. Okay. So, finding the side lengths in similar triangles. So, given the triangle ABC and triangle DEF, in the figure below here are similar. Find the lengths of the unknown side. So let me correct the given here. Side BC equals 32. So this is 32. Okay. Now take note that in the second condition of similar triangles, um, corresponding sides must be proportional. So meaning the ratios are equal. So from there, we can solve for the unknown sides okay the length of the unknown sides so let's start with line segment de class corresponds to line segment ac so from there we have de corresponds to ac which is equal to df that corresponds to 24 or ab. Now, we know that the two are equivalent fractions, so we can cross-multiply them. Equals ac times df. So we know that de is 8 times ab um, is 24 
And then we know that AC is 16 times DF. So the product of 8 and 24 is 192. And this is 16 DF. Dividing both sides by 16 will get DF. So DF equals 12. Okay. So this is now 12. So how about the other side? How about EF? So we can make use of this as well. Or um, solving for EF. EF corresponds to um, BC. So we can have EF corresponds to BC, which is equal to, we can use DF that corresponds to AB. And then we cross multiply again. So EF is, where is EF again? So EF is unknown here. So, EF times AB. So, we know that AB is 24 equals, so this is EF times AB and then BC times, so BC is 32 times DF which is 12. So this is 24 EF equals the product of 32 and 12. So we have 384. So dividing both sides by 24, we'll get EF. So EF is 16. Okay, so... EF is 16. So we were able to solve for the side lengths using um, the condition of similar triangles. So we know that the two triangles here are similar. So we can make use of the known side lengths for us to solve for the unknown side lengths. So that's it for now, grade 10.